Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a recent reads video. So let's talk about some of the books that I've read so well actually let's talk about all of the books I've read so far in the month of March um, because I have not done one of these sort of wrap up videos in a while and I want to do one before the stack of books gets too far out of control. So I have a few books to talk to you about today. The first book that I finished in March is this one. This is All Passion Spent by Vita Sackville West. This novel was first published in 1931 and this was a book that I buddy read at the beginning of the month with Britta Bowler and um, I really enjoyed this book very much. It is the story of Lady Slade who at the age of 88 finds herself a widow. Now Lady Slade has, is now at the point in her life when she can do what she wants and what she wants to do is rent a house in the outskirts of London and reflect upon her life. She got married, you know, as a young woman and um, her husband became like a, some sort of a government official in India. And so she has fulfilled her role as the wife of an important man in England during, you know, the early part of the 20th century, you know, late 1800s, early part of the 20th century. And now, you know, she's born like six children. I think there were six of them. And then those children have gone on and had children of their own and she has great grandchildren, but she is not interested in the rest of her family at this point. She is interested in like reflecting back on her life and figuring out what she gave up to be the wife of a very important man. Um, and she had had aspirations to be uh, a painter. And so obviously at the age of 88, she's not going to become a painter, but she thinks about, you know, a lot of things related to the choices that she made over the course of her life. I found this book to be very bittersweet in tone. I love an elderly uh, main character. I really appreciated her thinking about her life and choices she made because a lot of this is um, choices that women have made throughout time immemorial, you know, to have a family, to support that family, to support a husband or a spouse, um, and to s sort of put your own wants and needs on the back burner. And even though she led a very privileged existence, that doesn't negate the fact that she also gave things up to, uh, you know, create the life that her husband wanted. And I found it to be quite bittersweet, pretty amusing in parts. Um, she was a great character and the people that she surrounded herself with in her last years of her life were quite interesting and funny as well. Um, so yeah, if you like an elderly protagonist and you like thinking about things like, you know, your purpose in your life and what it means um, to give up on some of your own desires to uh, put other people in the forefront, you know, I think this was a really interesting and thought provoking read that I enjoyed very much spending time with. Then the next thing I completed was a nonfiction book called A Free-Spirited Woman, The London Diaries of Gladys Langford, 1936 to 1940. This is a book that was organized and published by the London Record Society, which is sort of like a historical society. And the, it's edited by a couple with the last name, last name Malcolmson. I didn't I didn't get that information, so I'll put a picture up here. Anyway, because I borrowed this book from the library. Um, I mentioned it briefly in my last vlog. This was a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac. Um, and I really like like collections of diary entries, um, particularly about women, particularly in his, like historically interesting time periods. So I really thought that this book was going to detail Gladys Langford's um, experiences in the war. Um, but this is sort of the run up to the Blitz. And it does talk about like England at the time period and what it was like to live through this time period where um, basically they're preparing for war, but trying still to avoid war with Germany and Hitler. And, um, you know, this uh, Gladys Langsford is sort of a middle-aged woman. She is a school teacher. She is not married. Um, and she is uh, not content <laughs> with her lot in life. She hates her job and she really would like to have a partner um, and neither one of those things are changing. Um, and so she's very acerbic in places, um, but it was very interesting historical time period to read about. She could be a little bit uh, prickly uh, and it might, some people might find her um, 
tone and her attitude to be irritating. Um, but I found her to be quite uh, funny in places and um, sad in places. And like, I just, I felt for her in places. Um, but she was a lot more uh, free spirited than I would have expected a woman in that time period to be, particularly in her attitudes towards the opposite sex. So it was very interesting. I'm super glad that my library was able to track down a copy for me. And I'm really glad that I read it. And I would not have read it if Sean hadn't brought the book to my attention. So I'm thankful for that. I then completed a book for the BookTube Prize. Um, over the mid-month book bash, I completed The Underworld by Susan Casey, which is nonfiction. Can't talk about it yet, but just to note that that was completed in the month of March. Um, the next thing I finished was an audiobook, and this was for March Mystery Madness. This was Heartstone by C.J. Sansom, and this is book number five in the Matthew Shardlake mystery series. Now, Matthew Shardlake is a lawyer in the time of the reign of King Henry VIII, um, he was, uh, he had been doing some work for Cromwell until Cromwell was no more. And so these last few books have been post Cromwell. Um, and I just find Matthew to be a very interesting character. I find this time period to be super fascinating. CJ Sansom does a great job of, of providing the context of what life was like in this time period in the 1500s. Um, without sort of overwhelming you, but just like adding in these details that really bring it to life. You know, what the, what bathroom facilities were like, what clothes people wore, how they got around from place to place, what transportation was like, what kind of jobs were people doing and what were they getting paid for those jobs? Like that sort of stuff is woven into the story, but not in an info dumpy way, just as an enhancement to the mystery storylines that we're trying to figure out. And in Heartstone, um, Matthew has been asked by the queen to follow up on um, a wardship that, you know, uh, I, in, th in this particular time period, children who were orphans were um, basically the property of the king to dispose of. And so uh, families would sometimes like uh, apply for wardship of particular children in order to gain access to their assets that they were left. So in this case, some parents die, the children are left with their property that has a lot of forest land on it. And these folks gain the wardship of these children. One of the children dies, the other one is still alive. And Matthew is investigating what is going on with this wardship because there seems to be something hinky going on. There's a couple of other side plots that I won't talk about here, um, but it's very uh, robust mystery with a lot of uh, stuff going on. In the midst of all of this, the king has decided that he's going to go to war with France. So everybody is like, all the soldiers are being conscripted and everybody's headed down to Portsmouth, which is where Matthew has to figure out this case that he's investigating for the queen. Um, and so like you get to witness the buildup of troops and what happens with the French at this particular moment in time, um, which is all real events that happened. So that was really fascinating and interesting. I will say these books are awesome on audiobook. The narrator, I can't remember the narrator, but I'll, I'll leave the name down below here. Um, fantastic narration, really great book to listen to on audio. I just had a great deal of fun with this one. And uh, I buddy read that one with Doris and I think she has not yet completed it. Um, but I really enjoyed my time spent with that one. And then I finished Another book in my presidential reading challenge. This is The Teapot Dome Scandal by Leighton McCartney. This, the subtitle is How Big Oil Bought the Harding White House and Tried to Steal the Country. So this is all about the scandal that erupted um, pretty much after um, Harding passed away. But this book explores what Harding knew um, before he passed away about all of this. So this is basically how powerful men in the government rig the system so that they could basically benefit from selling off government land to oil companies to get the oil underneath that land, which is not supposed to be allowed to happen, but these folks were getting bribes <laughs> like on the side um, in order to, uh, for these big companies, these rich men to get access to these government lands and the oil underneath of the government lands. And Teapot Dome was one of the pieces of land that was known to have oil under it. Um, this book was not very successful for me, mostly because it, I think that 
uh, the author was writing it in a way that was very uh, sensational. He was trying to be very, um, like he was really going for the, the um, seedy uh, and, uh, you know, sexy angles of this story. Um, and I was more interested in the facts. The other thing I will say about this, there is a ton of players involved and all of them are named and you go down all the storylines for each and every one of them. And there are so many people involved and it got really hard to remember who was who. Um, and at least half of this book is takes place after Warren G. Harding passed away. Um, and so I read this to try to flesh out my understanding of Warren G. Harding as a person and as a president. And I don't feel like this book really gave me much additional <laughs> information other than like basically all the gossip about him and his mistresses and his possible love child and, you know, all of this stuff about him that, you know, honestly, I was more interested in, in, not that side of his life and more interested in what he was really like as a president. But this book makes him out to be like, if he didn't know all about all this stuff, then he was a dummy. And if he did know, he was corrupt. So one way or the other, it wasn't, this isn't a very um, positive look at Warren G. Harding as a president. So that one is done. And then last but not least, I did finish one more book two prize book. And that was a Memoir of My Former Self by Hilary Mantel. And this uh, is essay collection. Um, I guess not an essay collection as much as, as a collection of uh, pieces that she wrote for other publications uh, before she passed away. And so that another nonfiction for my group of nonfiction that I'm reading for the booktube prize for this round. So I will be reviewing that in a video after the results are announced, which will be at the beginning of April. So those are the books that I've read so far in the month of March. I hope that you are all doing well and finding some great books to read. I'll talk to you later.